Hi, I'm Jeff DeRiso from Beckman Collaborative, and today I'm going to show you how to track the profitability of individual products in Zoho Analytics. We'll do this by creating a query table to join the profit and loss data for each product. Then we run an aggregate formula to calculate the profit. This will allow us to see which products are most and least profitable, and to see the profitability trends for each product over time. So let's get into Zoho Analytics, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we are in Zoho Analytics, and if we're going to measure the profitability of our products, the first thing we need to do is add our Zoho Finance data as a data source in Zoho Analytics. The Zoho Finance suite includes Zoho Books and Zoho Billing and Expense and several other applications. So if we go to Edit Setup here, this is when we choose which modules we want to import into Analytics. So for this video, we're going to use invoice items, customer payments, bill items, and vendor payments. Now bill items and invoice items are simply each line item on your bills and invoices. And we also want the payments because the date and time of the payment will be our most accurate date for tracking our finances. So once we've set that up, there's a lot we can do with it as is. Um, but when we try to calculate profit, we run into a problem. So let's just, for the sake of example, try to create a report here. Let's just make it a pivot view. And we'll do invoice items from Zoho Finance as our base table. Okay, so here on the left side, we have our tables and columns, and we'd have not only the invoice items table, but all the related tables. So first what we would do is we'd get the item name as a row group, and then in the data columns, we would put the invoice total, and we'll show more tables, and we'll get the, and we'll get the bill items table here, and we'll get the total from that. And we'll generate our pivot here. So now it's see, it looks like this is working. We can change these column names. This would be total revenue and total cost. And you see we have the item names, the, the revenue and cost for each. There's numbers being generated. And we could even add a formula and say, and then say invoice items minus bill item. So that looks like it's working, right? We are getting a calculation. We're getting total revenue cost per item and calculating the profit. Now, the problem with that, however, is there's no date or time values associated with these. So if we try to filter this as we would want to do, if we were going to look at our data by date or time, that's where we run into problems. Because if I filter by the bill item date or the bill payment date, then that will throw off my calculation because it will only affect the bill items. It will not affect the invoice items. And if I try to filter by my invoice payment date, again, we'll have the same problem in reverse where it'll only affect the invoice items that are being pulled in, not the bill items. So it ends up throwing off the whole calculation. So what we need to do in order to calculate the profit accurately is join the two tables, invoice items and bill items, with one common date column, which is represented as the payment date. So how would we join data together like that? For that, we use something called the query table. So I'll delete this report and we'll go to create query table. So when we create our query table, we come to this screen. This is where we construct our query using structured query language or SQL. So we've, they've given us a little bit of a sample here. So we'll, we'll delete that. So first we'll bring in our invoice items and we want to create a new column because we want to be able to denote when we're bringing in revenue versus when we're bringing in costs. So we'll say revenue and then we use the keyword as and that creates an alias for this new column. And the alias will be type or you could say transaction type. So that will be our first column. We, so we just created our first column and the next column we want will be actually from the invoice items data here. So we'll click invoice items and then dot, and then our field name, which first will be 
invoice ID. And our alias for this column will be ID. Because again, when we join it with the bill ID, it won't just be called invoice ID. So the next column we want will be invoice items dot item name. And our alias for this column will just be item name. Because items can be used for both invoices and bills. So now our next column will not be from invoice items. It will be from invoice payments, which is right here. And it will be the created time. So the time that the payment was created is essentially the time that the invoice was paid. The alias for this column will be payment time our next column will be again from invoice items and we'll add our total in our base currency and the alias for this column will be total Okay, so that's the end of our first select statement. Now we use the keyword from in all caps, and we grab again the name of those two tables that we used in this select query. So we get invoice items, and we, we hit comma, and then invoice payments. Now we need a where clause, we need to type in where. So we wanna say where the invoice items dot invoice ID equals invoice payments dot invoice ID. So let's give our table a name here. Item profit and loss. And we'll click save. And now we'll click execute query. So you can see we've created these four columns here. We have the type, the ID, the item name, the payment time, and the total. But of course, this is just our invoice data. So now we need to bring in all of our bill data. So to do that, we use the keyword union. And union is the way that we combine the rows from two different tables, but we don't duplicate the columns. We keep the columns the same. So these same four columns are going to be filled with the data from the bill items that we pull. So we need to bring in the columns in the same order that we did for the invoices. So let's do another select query. And for the first column, we'll just call it a cost. And the second time we don't have to declare our column aliases because they've already been created. So we just put a comma and we move on to our next column. So let's go to our bill items dot and we need the bill ID. And then we need our item name from our bill items. Item name. And now we need to go to our table called payments made dot and then we will take the created time and that will match up as our payment time for the bill and then we of course need to go back to our bill item and get the total so now we do from bill item comma payments made where, and we do the same thing as we did with invoice payments. We want to match the bill ID from the payment to the bill ID from the bill item. So payments made dot bill ID equals bill item dot bill ID. So now we execute the query and we click save and let's go to view mode. So now that I'm in view mode, you can see that we have our columns and we have revenue and costs here. 
And now because we have our bill payment time and our invoice payment time in the same column, we can create an aggregate formula that will calculate our profit very simply. So the way we do that is we go to add, add aggregate formula, and we'll call this profit amount. So we have on the right side here, our data type is going to be currency. And on the right here, we have functions and columns. Now here's where we can just grab our columns by clicking on them to insert them into our formulas. And be, but because this is an aggregate formula, we need to use aggregate functions. So for our purposes, we'll use sum if. So what we want to do here is add our condition. Our condition is that the type equals revenue. And we'll put that word revenue in single quotations, just like we did in our query. Now we put, now after that, we put a comma. And now we put the column total. And so what this represents is if the item type is revenue, if the payment type is revenue, then it, this is the sum of all the total column for where the payment type is revenue. So that's all of our revenue in this whole table. So now what we want to do is put this entire thing in parentheses. And we want to do the minus sign. And let's do the same thing. We'll do start with parentheses this time, and then we'll do sum if. But this time, we want to be if type equals cost and comma. And we put that same total column. Now you can click save right now and that will be fine for a large percentage of cases. But for example, if you, if there are certain items where you may not have costs for certain periods of time, so if the cost value is null, then the formula won't be able to calculate it. And instead of seeing uh, all of your revenue as profit, you just won't see it at all. So in order to make sure that we don't subtract a null value, we want to use the if null function so we go to our logical functions and we click if null. We put all this inside of that. And then we add a comma and we add zero. So that means if this value is not null, this will be the value. But if it is null, then we just insert the value of zero. And that way, if there's no cost for a particular time period, you'll see your revenue as the profit as it rightfully should be. So now we can click save. And now that we've created our formula successfully, let's just look at how easy it is to create a report based on this data now. So we'll go to create, chart view, and we'll do this table, select okay. Now all we do is drag our item name to the x-axis, the profit amount to the y-axis, and we click to generate the graph. So here's, all of our item names here, and then our profit amount here. And when we, and the important part is here is filtering it by time, of course. So we'll create a user filter and we use the payment time. Now here we'll select relative period this year. And we'll select some of these and we'll make the default this year and we'll generate the graph. So these are all of our item profit rates. This is all of our item profit amount for this year. And we'll sort it by Y value descending so we can see on the left side, we'll have our products that are most profitable and the least on the right. So that is how you use query tables to track product profitability in Zoho Analytics. The query table opens up a whole other range of options that extend the capability of how you can analyze your data within Zoho Analytics. And if you've seen my previous videos on creating a dashboard with widgets and trend data for a historical trend over time, you could create a whole dashboard just to show the profitability of your products. Because we brought those two date columns into a single column, we can filter it by date and get an accurate profitability for a specific time period. So now if we select a different time period here, like last six months, you'll see this graph change in real time. 
And if we create a widget, we'll have real-time accurate data of our profit this month versus the previous month or the previous quarter, et cetera. So please let me know in the comments if you have any questions and you can always contact Beckman Collaborative for support. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.